Hi, I'm Carmen Carey and welcome to this video. This one is another video for those starting out at large corporations, especially in call centers or IT support or similar places. Basically, this one will be about uh, your very first steps, your very first days at the company. Now, one thing is really important, usually in these places, is how you dress. Uh, it might sound a bit superficial, but there are dress codes in these companies and you need to sort of gauge what's acceptable and then what is um, required. Um, some of the companies are really strict about this. Uh, some of them have a bit more leeway, uh, but we'll see. Uh, because every company is a bit different in these things. So uh, the safest way <clears throat> is um, basically in your first day, uh, just dress like you would dress for a job interview. Show your best. You can always dress down later, but uh, nobody is going to have a bad look or any bad words to you because you were dressed well on your first couple of days. So that's uh, kind of a safe way to go with it. <clears throat> After that, um, just follow the dress code of the company. Usually they will give you all the information about that. And uh, you can also sort of gauge the environment, like the people around you, how they dress and what's acceptable and what's, what's the usual fashion, so to say, <laughs> of the office. Because uh, if you see that everyone is running around in um, a t-shirt and jeans, then it will be really kind of awkward that you waltz around in a suit every day. You might think you have better chances for promotion if they see you constantly in business attire, but if your performance numbers are not backing it up, um, don't even dream about it. So it's looks are not everything in these companies. I've seen several people stuck at bottom level, uh, acting very corporate-like, uh, but they were horrible at their jobs, to be honest, and they never got ahead at all. Um, there are various factors that play into a promotion, and just looking like a manager, it's not everything. Uh, you have to realize that <clears throat> beyond a certain level um, of, of management, um, numbers matter. They they won't even know um, seeing you on the corridor who you are or in which team you are. They will just know the numbers that you provide. So that's mm, way more important than than your attire. Okay, uh, and you must also keep in mind that um, in a call center, for example, or especially a problem solving environment like um, IT support, it's already a very high stress environment as it is. So having extra sources of frustration like uh, a tight belt, a tight collar, uh, a, a suit that's a bit too rigid or so, that is going to infuriate you, like really ruin your day. Uh, and of course the management will see it otherwise as a lot of uh, managers to be honest, they want to see a bunch of polished toy soldiers. Um, that's a different subject. We will have a series about the boss types. But basically, it's, it's really useful to find a proper compromise. Have something which is still acceptable by the company's dress code, um, but does not feel restrictive or uncomfortable to the level that it would distract you from your work. Uh, yeah, looking good is never um, never the better choice when when it's actually hindering your your work, basically. Later on, if you perform well, like so to say, you bring in the high numbers, uh, they won't really bother you with this. Um, most of the time, for these companies, numbers are way more important. Like. Are you really productive? Are you really helpful? Are you really a benefit for the whole company? Uh, they will look the other way if you're in jeans and t-shirt. But if your numbers don't add up, then believe me, dress code will be bring, brought up against you if they want to get rid of you. So yeah, just do the work and, and dress adequately. <laughs> uh, basically, that's that's the point.
Now, the other uh, thing that will impact your life on the first couple of days at these companies is uh, training. Now, this is really an interesting subject because uh, I've been providing trainings for about 17 years in various subjects. I've written training materials, went through knowledge transfer processes and all that. And so basically, uh, it seems a lot of people have very strange ideas about what such a training um, contains and how it goes down. So if you go to a company where there's actually a training provided by a teacher, so it's not just you get a bunch of PowerPoints and you just have to click through them, but an actual teacher is teaching you for maybe several weeks, then the least you can do is take notes and read your notes, like in school, because it is school for your future. Countless people uh, came to my trainings without any sheet of paper or notebook or pen claiming they will just memorize the training, the one or two weeks long training. Or you will memorize it. Yeah. And needless to say, after the first day of information bombardment against their brains, uh, the second day they suddenly either brought their own notebooks or uh, they started asking around for paper and pen to be able to write on anything because they, they kind of realized that their <clears throat> mental capabilities are not up to the level of memorizing a two weeks long training session. Uh, it's kind of funny to see them. <laughs> Yeah. But uh, yeah, if um, someone went through the whole training without writing down a single sentence, uh, we knew that that person would be trouble. But usually these people messed up their work so much that sooner or later the company um, either let them go or put them in a so-called low effort team where they won't bother anyone and they don't really have to do much or so. That's usually in cases when they want to avoid any kind of confrontation. So, yeah, it happens. So, take it seriously. Uh, all in all, I trained over 300 people in those 17 years. And what I can tell, the difference between the, the those who became really useful employees and the others <laughs> was that the useful ones took notes and uh, read the notes and they really took it seriously like like preparing for a school exam or so um that was really kind of logical because they they are being taught their future livelihood so why wouldn't you take it seriously but still a lot of people were really uh just um, easy going with it not really paying attention and they ended up in the problematic group so to say uh, you have to realize that uh, even if you're a professional of the specific activity your new employer is involved in or you have decades of experience um, coming from other companies this new company's uh, inner workings uh, will still be completely alien to you and they might have regulations which will basically render your previous knowledge just irrelevant. I've seen professional programmers break down in anger because they just couldn't understand why their professional tricks didn't work uh, in the new system. Well, the company uh, where they worked for now had really special limitations on their entire digital environment. And these people, instead of learning how to work within those limitations, just kept banging their heads against the wall and just didn't want to give up because they couldn't understand why their tricks don't work. So usually we told these people that uh, um, what worked outside simply doesn't work inside the company. And this is simply a different sandbox and they either get used to it and, and work within those limitations or just give up because there's nothing else that can be done basically. Now, after these uh, trainings, um, there's usually a final test. Study for it, but study with, uh, with a 
bit of common sense. You don't have to memorize everything, uh, but you do have to know where to find the needed information. Especially in IT support, for example, they don't need people who know everything by heart. They need people who know how to find information. Now, this is also useful because usually these companies have all sorts of databases or knowledge bases with, with all the information, all the solutions for the problems, the descriptions, error messages and everything. And uh, basically, if you memorize things, when the system, when the database is updated with new information, your brain doesn't get that update. Unless you run into that problem and look it up in the system, you will still be using your memories, which will be basically obsolete compared to what's in the system. So that's why it's <clears throat> far more important to know how to find information in the system than to actually memorize everything. Uh, sometimes it's... Uh, it can be beneficial. Uh, for example, in my case, I, I regularly had to use some really old, obscure um, tricks in the system, but those were because they were really on a basic level, like, like command prompt uh, commands and, and, and uh, tricks and all that. But uh, on countless occasions, people were <clears throat> relying on their memory and they didn't understand why something doesn't work. And when we told them that, hey, but look up the information, the knowledge base, because that's or, or your database, because that's where the up to date information is. And they didn't even know how to find it. So that that was a problem. And usually this is also tested uh, in these final tests before they let you into the live environment that are you going to be able to survive, basically? Are you going to be able to find the solutions? And if something doesn't work, are you going to stall? Are you going to basically block down and, and just freeze? Or are you just going to keep looking for new information? And also later on, it will be useful to, um, if, you, if you need information, need a solution, uh, check these databases if they are provided. And if you really cannot find something or really something doesn't seem to match with what you're seeing, then ask colleagues for help. Or if there's a special person designated for helping in these cases, then ask them. But they will also appreciate if you first try to find a solution yourself, just check these databases and then go to a live person because they have their own jobs as well. So this will be it, kind of um, uh, first episode of the first steps in a new uh, corporate environment. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, next video will come out on next Wednesday. And uh, if you like the video, then likes are highly appreciated. If uh, you would like to see more of these videos, then please subscribe. And um, if you know someone who could benefit from this video or just regularly would like to share this video with others and please share it really helps in building the audience uh, for the future of this channel and if you wish to support me there are other ways to do that you can support me on patreon where i'm sharing early access and exclusive contents and you can also buy any of my products on redbubble uh, with my designs or you can also buy a copy or two of the uh, adventures of the smallest astronaut book one which is available on all regions of amazon currently so i hope you enjoyed this video thank you for your time 